part two of the Head Night featuring special guests, the Irish Pubcast and Arcavius Eternal. I mean, I, I I wasn't asked to the Hen, and that's fine. I mean, sure. Why ask Roz? <laughs> oh, and Kyle's there as well, but, like, you know, might, you know. Mm. Why don't we play Two Truths and a Lie? And immediately Destiny just lights up and it's just like, oh my god, yes, a party game. Oh my god, Jizzy, you know I love a party game. Caria, Philp, and Stephanie look a little uncomfortable. <laughs> like they've played one or two of these. Well, Dizzy, since you're the bride to be, you should go first. And we can all take turns. Guessing which is your lie. Now, because this is a bachelorette party, hen party, whatever you want to call it, this is a drinking game, bitches. We need to guess her lie. And if we do, she has to do a shot. If we don't, she gets to pick one of us to do a shot. The bride needs to get her buzz on. Giselle looks to be kind of like she's leaning into a little bit of more of the fun. She's controlling the situation. She's got full attention. She seems happy now. All good things happen when someone is clapping and yelling bitches. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. But very excited. She's excited to be a normie. Destiny kind of like, okay, so I'm madly in love with a rock star. I love dancing. Mm, I hate doing shots. I think it's the third one. I oh think doing god. shots is a lie. Oh my god, you got me! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, I think that was an easy one, though. Oh, it's because I love doing shots. And oh. Giselle pulls a thin, spirally bottle out of a, a black clutch bag. In it, you see that black, swirling liquid. And Destiny holds out her shot glass. And Giselle uncorks it. There's just a, a cold energy. And it's like the bottle breathes like condensation into the air. You can kind of see it. Can Ned just kind of like try and look and inspect the bottle from a close distance? Uh, be it like inside or arcana or something to see if there's anything about it. You can, you can give me an arcana check if you want. That is a 21. Okay, so you don't know what it is, Nedris. But... There's two things that are very immediately obvious to you. One, that kind of bottle is usually in some sort of goddamn alchemist's shop or lab. You'd never, you've never popped into your local offo and seen a bottle like that on a shelf. And two, that's definitely not glitter in the bottle. But you're not quite certain. Like, it's that weird thing of like, it's almost like you'd have to taste it. Destiny takes her shot, she holds it up. I'm getting married! And just knocks it straight back and drops it on the table. She kind of just like uh, wipes away at her mouth a little bit. Okay, okay, so my turn and I pick. Her arm kind of swishes around and a finger points straight at you, Nedris. Okay, it's your turn, new friend. So, two truths and a lie. Okay, well, and Ned just kind of like is like, I am, and takes a big swig out of her tankard and and kind of rocks back at her chair. I once had to sew an orc's guts back in on the field of battle. I once saw a human wizard self emulate because he got a fireball spell wrong, and I've never been drunk in my life. Don't think this person has ever been drunk in their life. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I think it's that one too. Yeah, don't get a kind of hooli, ho- hooli vibe off. What was the other one's fire and what? Um, I had to sew an orc's half orc's guts back into their stomach on the battlefield because that's that was my, my job. I'm a field medic, so it's what I do. How did how did they self immolate? Can we can we probe? Can we pry? Well, the, the human wizard had just learned how to use the fireball spell and he was thought he was like going to be the, the bee's knees. He was taking out a regiment at range and he accidentally 
Elf casted on himself. A couple of the guys around him got singed eyebrows, but he was like, he was gone. It was it was quite the sight, actually. Uh, we were we we were we we didn't really have much to sweep up afterwards. What suture did you use for the orc? Oh, um, well, it was a bow stitch, really, to finish it off. He was uh, quite a burly fella. I kept squirming. It, it, it healed quite nice, actually. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I meant like the the, the structure of the, of the of the wire or the thread or whatever or what was. Uh, it was wire. Um, uh, he liked it. it. It looked good afterwards. Can I have a look at your hands for palaces? This is, I think that's that's it. I stitch myself, and I've you know occasionally like you know hurt myself, so I've built. So can I have a look at your hands, please? Ned just takes off one of the gloves. You see that they are scarred and worn. Change my answer to the first one. Oh, I can uh, recommend the lotion for that love lock. It, it makes your hands all lovely. I'm going to say the fire one's a lie. I feel like self immolation. I feel like immolation is. Maybe not something you just come away from. I feel like you'd need to go to therapy or something from that. And I don't think you've been. I think you look pretty twisted. I'm going to go with three. Oh, I think you might be on your own there. Hey, I'm going to go with uh, now desperately trying to mug in with Mariella. I, I go with the fire one, too. Are we going consensus or are we going numbers? Generally, we would go with the group. And in a desperate need to get away from what is definitely not appropriate bachelorette party conversation, um, <laughs> I'm also going to vote fire. And Caria, Philp, and Stephanie also put their hand up at fire. Well, uh, okay. Well, I, you're all wrong. I well, no. Uh, the attacking stripper got it right. I've never been drunk in my life. The alcohol floods the system. It's not good for you, really. Are we not trying to guess the lie? So if that was yeah, true, we were trying to yeah, guess. We were trying to guess which thing you were lying about, and we said you you, you weren't drunk before. We oh, said, sorry, I I get muddled up sometimes. And she kind of looks very sheepish and looks around. I tell you what, to make up for all the burns and the the guts talk, do a shot. Just do a shot, and we'll just get over it. Oh, and then you lost, so you have to do another okay. shot. So okay. double fisted, just double fisted, bitch. Ayal is gonna mage hand a little shot glass and kind of <laughs> wave it under your nose. Uh, and Ned just kind of reaches out and takes the two glasses and let's put them in front of her and like kind of looks very nervous and then just quickly <laughs> just knocks them back in unison. I think you have to sometimes do extra ones in penance for not knowing the rules. I, 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 had, a, I had a hard time a few times with card games and things like that to be throwing things at me. Do you know what? That's, that's a new homebrew rule. Another one. Another shot. I, I've just done two. I, I, I don't. We all, and then Giselle just kind of, you know what, we'll, we'll divert to the bride. It's her night. Whatever she says goes. Do a shot, bitch. Oh, okay. Shots. Uh, and like, Destiny is like, shots, 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 shots. Uh, she's definitely on the sauce. And very, very kind of shakily, Nedris takes another one under the peer pressure of it all and kind of looks at the group and just like under her breath, just curses Roz. She's like, this social stuff is fucking horrible. And then just knocks back the, the third shot in a row. Give me three con saves. I think that truth is about to become a lie pretty soon. <laughs> if it helps you feel any better, I actually know Spare the Dying as a cantrip, so <laughs> you're okay. The first one was 13. I've no modifier, so the first one was 13. The second one was 12. And the third one was a 70. Okay, so take one point of intoxicated. So is that Gift of the Gab, is it? That's Gift of the Gab, so you have a plus one to social roles. Uh, Giselle kind of looks at you. So you just went, you get to pick the next person to go. Okay, uh, I suppose, and she kind of, you see her head kind of cock a bit and look at Giselle. Well, why don't we go with you? Oh. Okay, um, so I was the one who barfed in Caria's bag that spring break that we all went to Mystian. And Caria is like, what? Like, literally eyeballing her hard. Sorry, sorry. Keep going. Um, I absolutely adore, and she points at Vareri, what you're wearing. And I'm probably the most successful person here. Well, darling, I know two lies there, but I think the one you're intentionally lying about is this poor creature's outfit, probably. I'm sorry, darling, but it's 
lovely. I'm so sad. I know what's happening and I'm so fucking sad. I am pig blood on my prom dress right now. I thought I was doing okay. I helped with the naked lion. I thought I did a thing. I was in a group and you did this to me. I'm so <laughs> sad. What's the role for sadness? Can I roll for sadness? Give me a roll, give me a roll of a d20. <laughs> the pain. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm rolling for sadness, Declan. This is what you've done. Welcome to a Declan game. Oh, that one. It's all. Fake. Oh yeah, you're you're Not full out. on carry without the without the <laughs> telekinesis. Like you are. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> I'm fully two arms out like this. Don't know how to stand anymore. All, all oh fuck. Oh my god. It takes an awful lot for Kyle to feel like to feel <laughs> to feel to genuinely feel bad for someone. But even he's like he like bites his, the inside of his cheek very hard. I'm going to just turn around and go. Uh, I'll I'll be I'll be back in a minute, and I'm gonna go wet the beard. God, was it something I said? Uh, well, look, darling, if you can't handle the heat, you probably should stay out of the kitchen. Um, but Giselle, you've definitely told two lies because last I checked, you're not really as successful as me. So you should probably take two drinks for that. I mean, if we call amateur productions of my unfair dame, sure. Oh, how's Pilates going? Are you still seeing that prick? I mean, stick? <laughs> I can actually see the stick from here. You might need to work on the squats or do some clenches or something. No, she's tight enough already, to, clearly. There really is a stick up there? I mean, I I, I commented on it earlier as, uh, as I came in, but uh, there's actually a stick? I'm I'm literally crying elsewhere. <laughs> Stop! I feel awful. I wasn't all in on this dress. I was under no illusions. I was just I just want to meet the brief. But the fucking ten minutes of belonging got snatched away like a tablecloth in a prank, and I can't. I wasn't ready. I I was lulled. Um, Nedris is gonna go look for uh, Valeria. Where? Yeah. <laughs> she means so much to you, you don't even know her fucking name. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. Go watch the movie Valeria. <laughs> v- um, Vieira. Fucking, you know. Valeria. It's like Valeria. If she, I'm sure if she's a drag queen, I'd fucking remember. Valeria. <laughs> Grand. Okay. Yeah, so Nedra's going to look for Valeria and try and go find her because that's that was a horrible situation. Giselle wanting to deflect the whole thing. Okay, so... Ugh, uh, Granny, um, I, I pick you. Bangle your way out of this one, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, been around the world, so uh, I, I need a minute to remember what's truthful and what's not truthful. But I'll go with an easy one to start with. Um, our favourite cocktail is a Feywild Samurai because it tickles your throat. And then blows the head off you. The the second one, uh, this dress I'm wearing, the owner is uh, tied up in the basement of my house. <laughs> 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 the third one is way back when, when I was mining Destiny, and, uh, you know, we uh, had that running with the lich. Well, it was a lot worse than just a nick on her arm. Um, long story short, I had the cloner. And then mind wipe her so she doesn't know she's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> and she takes a big, huge swig of alcohol as if she's after relieving something that's been, you know, <laughs> crushing her for for many years. <laughs> Granny, take inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Granny just confessed to a lot of crimes. And as the group sit around to ponder Granny's injustices, we flash to the the bathrooms where Verere is standing in the stall, clutching at tissues. There's a you hear the door groan and the the patter of footsteps uh, as someone else comes into the bathroom. Who's there? <laughs> It's all right. It's it's just me. Um, we we haven't been properly introduced. My name is Nedris. 
Have you, um, Nedris Rose Bottle? Hey, Nedris, you, you saw all that, did you? I did, and I've seen I've seen some slaughter in my time, um, and that was pretty fucking brutal. Um, so uh, I just thought I'd come and see how you're doing and check in because I I, unders- I understand I'm not the most social of individuals. Uh, I'm only here on the behest and, and general bullyment and pushing of Roz Graypus. Uh, I can understand how you feel. I've I've been ridiculed before for my lack of awareness, and I just thought I'd come in and and and, there, and then just kind of pats her on the back a bit, and it's going to cast calm emotions on Ferrere. Oh, that's nice. Is there a saving I, throw? Uh, a Christmas saving throw, uh, DC eleven. That's a fifteen. Oh Jesus, <laughs> this doesn't work. <laughs> You feel kind of the reassuring patting on the back from Nedris Verere, but I can't. I know what's. I know what's going on. Uh, so I turn around to to her and I'm like, "Thanks for coming out. I saw you when I came in. I came in and I saw you, and I said, that's where you want to be going. Talk to your one. She'll know. I imagine that you would be kind of interested in some of the same things as me, and I thought that that would be okay." Then I saw them sparkly ones and I thought, so when are you ever going to see them again and get over there and talk to that fancy woman and that other one? And then it was going grand, like, it was grand. Yeah, they, they kind of lull you in with this kind of false sense of um, belonging, I suppose. I mean, one minute they're all camaraderie and sharing meat at a fire. And drinking ale, and then the next minute they're getting their legs chopped off and they're expecting to sell them back on. And you have to understand, these kind of people, they're fuckers. They're not nice. And the, all this bling and, 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 you know, glitter, it's covering up some really horrible personalities in my own experience. So, really, at the end of the day, fuck them. You know? It's all you really got to do is to say, fuck them. I will say this. And I'm saying that this, and this is my, this is probably the most I've spoken to anyone in a while. And I think it's because of that uh, abyssal liquid that that wagon of a, whatever Giselle bitch gave us. So if they kind of land on you and ask for your lies and your, your truths and stuff, make it as obvious as you can, because I, I don't trust any of them. What did it were so simple? I just, I just, I wasn't trying to be, like, part of anything. I'm under no illusions, but I just, I'm annoyed at myself. I'm annoyed at myself for trying. But, look, if I'm in here for too long, then they win, and it's all fucking that thing. So, I think you me stride out there like nothing happened. Like, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm big. Like, I've, I've. Chop people's heads off before. Like, how is this a problem? There, there was, there's nice ones out there. That older woman is troubled, but everyone else seems to be fairly <laughs> decent. I like, I have to build my resilience at some point. Like, if I'm going to f- fly up towards the sun, I'm gonna have to be aware of the dangers. I'm going to, I'm going to get out there and I'm just gonna uh, carry on and do my round and show. We'll see what happens. Well, let's go. Let's keep an eye on each other. Let's, yeah. Yeah. There's faint knocking on the door of the bathroom. And as the group were discussing the fact that a lot of what Granny admitted to was at at worst criminal, or or, or, or at best criminal, at worst highly, highly unethical and immoral. (laughs) Um, Cruel and unusual. Cruel and unusual in many ways. (laughs) Giselle had made her apologies that she also had to go to the... Lake. Giselle, sorry, Giselle made apologies? No, Giselle just said she was going for a piss. That's the closest she was making to apology. Okay. There's a faint knocking on the door and you, you can just hear from the other side, Verere, it's Jizzy. Ask yourself, come on in, come on in, it's grand. And she kind of meekly kind of half opens the door and she's standing there. It was kind of brought to my attention that what I said possibly hurt your feelings. 
to look like I didn't do department training. I didn't do finishing school. I don't know what just are gonna like. I have I have lots of skills, but dressmaking isn't one. And you're probably right. Like this is I, I borrowed this. Like I just wanted to. I wanted to be monochromatic, and so here I am. And you are you a, a vision of charcoal gradients. I've come to broach peace. We can have peace, but you don't have to be telling lies. Like It's destiny's night, and I'd like everybody to be in good spirits. That means you too. I've brought a peace offering. And from behind her, behind her back, she whips a tray with three shot glasses <laughs> on it. Okay, do you know what? I... <laughs> I don't agree with what happened back there, but I do agree with whatever's going on in these shots. These are amazing. So let's 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 get on. And I I can be in here crying that you othered me all night, but I couldn't have less of a clue of what goes into making this either. Gestures at Giselle. I don't know how you get to this either. So agree to disagree and and all forms are valid. And sure, let's do shots and get back out there. But I do, I do have to piss. Sorry, I'll be back. <laughs> she, <laughs> she she takes a, a a glass off the tray and then she holds the the tray out to the both of you. Chug. Yeah, I I wait for her to I wait for Giselle to take the shot first and then I'll make it. Yep, she she knocks it back. And I just just looking straight at her, like keeping eye contact. I just slowly just neck it the the drink and just like, mm, and then just place the glass back on the tray and when. Verere's and the Jacks. I just lean in towards it like, I've cut infections worse than you out of people. Keep a civil tongue in your mouth for the rest of the night if you can keep it. Ooh, get you all three foot of you. She crouches down a little bit, smiling, uh, kind of clasping the tray. And I've taken shits bigger than you, so <gasps> don't start. Okay. She heads out the door. Both of you give me con saves, please. Oh, that's a 17. I'm rolling like a mofo this evening. I got a nat 20. Nedris actually has never been drunk before because she physically can't, apparently. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she so well. While everybody like dodged off to the bathroom, I think uh, Mariella is kind of just going to say, perhaps what I said was a bit too far, but I guess I wanted to get to the root of what I thought Jizzy was going for there, and I didn't think that it would escalate. This is your night, darling, and she's going to procure some form of alcohol to share with Destiny to, like, apologise for making a drama. Destiny is now kind of, like, bobbing back and forth a little bit. Like, it's a little bit, like, she's definitely... She's loose and loose. ...inebriated. She's a bit dizzy. She's a bit... Uh, oh, Mariella, oh. Oh, you no, it's... Like... Oh, you, know, you know Jizzy, you know Jizzy. She's got a dark sense of humour. She's got a dark sense of humour. I know, I know. I wanted to get it out there. I just wanted to, like, I didn't want it to fester because I thought it would just get worse. And You know what I mean? Mariella, you tell me if I was a clone, wouldn't you? Like, you... I'm not a clone, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, darling, no, darling, no, darling, no, darling. No, darling. Mommy and Daddy are going to be so upset if they find out that I'm not the real... <laughs> The real Destiny, and I'm like Destiny 2, like a really bad oh, no, sequel. And uh, Mariella is going to like crocodile tears with her. It's like, no, darling, no, darling. Look, listen, look, listen, right? You're not a clone. You look the same as you always have. We, we, I've known you for a long time now. You're just still the same Destiny you always were, okay. right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. There's one way to yeah. start this. Granny? They forgot the rules of the game. Naturally, they were um all lies. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah. If you were that clown, you you know, look, you would have the cut on. Uh, sorry, the the clown would have the cut on her um her right. I mean, left, left. Uh, yeah, left. So yeah, you're not the. Cl I mean, there's no clown. I was, I was like, oh, this, this. I'll have a shot. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be somebody else's turn, actually, weirdly enough, I think. Hasn't it? Can I roll insight to see if I know what which yes, one is actually the light, please? Rani, give me a con save while you're at it. No worries. That is a dirty 20. 
Oh, granny, what was the lie? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Dirty 20. I am actually. Uh, so for the con is actually 17. Yeah, I'm going to. Would it be deception? Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Come on, fluffy dice. Don't let me down. That's it. it I, I think it works. That's a, I rolled a 15 and I've got plus four. So 19. So I think I failed. Have I? You rolled a 20. Right. Give me a second. I'm going to roll a D6. My God. <laughs> you reckon that the shot is the lie. The witch. Their first one is that she loves uh, her favorite sh- uh, shot is a f- uh, Feywild Samurai. So Mariella is just gonna like like it's just comforting destiny, and as Destiny's like, do not look like. See, Granny said this side would have the scar, and you've it on the other side. And she said it was completely all made up. She's crazy. Look at her. She's drinking yeah. like so much since she started. Yeah, that's how Daddy so fired her. Yeah, yeah, but she's fun. But maybe this isn't the right kind of fun for you right now. Just, just, yeah. And and Mariella's gonna look over to Granny and while Destiny's like being comforted, it's just gonna be like, what the fuck? Like is is basically gonna be mouthing, what the fuck? <laughs> She's like, what the And Granny, it's your turn to pick someone for their truth and lie. As I, I think at this stage, Nedris and Vary coming back from the bathroom with Giselle. Yeah. Um, oh, um... I'll, 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 uh, she'll turn to, she'll go, she kind of like has been looking at Kai and she's like, Dairy, do, uh, it's a bit, did I, were you, did I look after you when you were young? Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm, no, I'm actually a clone of the person you looked after. Ha 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 ha, joke, <laughs> funny joke, isn't it a funny joke? <laughs> it's such a funny joke you made. Because <laughs> that's what, yeah, <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. No, not <laughs> no, no, dearie, no, no, um. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I thought I recognised you. Yeah, Jesus, you've grown, haven't you? Oh, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll ch- choose. H- h- how's your folks? Oh, I haven't seen them at the local uh, chainmail knitting classes lately. Oh, oh, well, look, I've never seen them, so that works out. Uh, two, two truths? Two truths, one lie. That's the, that's the ratio. That's the ratio. Two truths and a lie, yeah. Yeah, that's just, just all just swings back in. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, two truths and a lie. In no particular order, I don't have enough digits to count my maximum number of concurrent sexual conquests in one evening. The second one is I was left at the altar by a wandering bard. And the third one is that I used to have a huge crush on someone here. I mean, A? A? Is anyone going A? No, he, and Giselle kind of like looks up and down. Reeks of, I mean, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Strikes me as somebody who'd be um, experienced. I think that's the polite way of saying what we're all thinking. That, that, he's a dirty owl hua. He does the, he does the like, oh my god, what's the movie? Uh, he does the seductive leg crossing and uncrossing. <laughs> the basic instinct. basic instinct. That's the one, he does oh, the basic geez. instinct leg thing. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay he has so pants we're, on, it's fine. We're all, we're all, we're all agreed that uh, Kai here is not saving himself. Uh, Ran uh, through. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, why can everybody else be mean, but I apparently can't? It's your tone. You're too good at it, Terry. You're too good at it. Yes, yeah, Sally, you've always had a, a knack for the the sniping. You've been very good at it. My money is on our friend here getting left at the altar. Yeah, I, I heard birds can be a bit flighty, all right. I suppose I suppose it could be talked into that. I see. All right. Well who who'd be who'd be who'd be the, the person in C? not me that's not part of the game that's a whole different game we can play that one later and he points it or he just like winks oh uh, yeah fair <laughs> enough fair enough all right <laughs> uh, I, i'm gonna go with b i don't i don't mean you're a fine specimen i don't believe anyone would leave you at the altar in some way those bo- bots can um, be charming so i'm gonna go with b as well so I think I think I think we're gonna say we're Destiny is now kind of leaning in. We're gonna say B. We're gonna say the altar. He leans down and traces the tip of the shot glass with his finger. In a a, a slightly hushed voice, says, "I actually have 
just enough digits to count my maximum number of concurrent sexual partners in the evening. And pushes the shot glass away from him towards the center of the table. And that is my lie. I'm going to go and get another round if that's... Uh, yeah. And turns away. Kyle had headed to the bar with uh, his truth and lies revealed. And there's a, a little bit of a silence that kind of festers in the group. The mood has been a little... Somber isn't the right word. The mood has been a bit shifty. The entire time our Leonin friend has been squatting and thrusting, standing <laughs> on his hands, twerking, spinning, twirling, you name it. There was even a bit of shadow puppetry there for a while. Uh, I'll leave all of that to your imaginations. As Kyle comes back from the bar and you see that like, the evening has rolled on, like the, the between the drinking, the conversation, the party games, a, a lot of those who had who kind of milled in after the day's work have had their fill and have kind of parted ways. And so it's, it's a little less quiet or it's a little less loud. It's a little loud. It's a little less rowdy around these parts. And Kyle, as you turn back, you notice that the old Leonin has shifted off the stage. There's now a tall, gangly half-elf dressed all in black somberly crossing the stage dragging a lute in, uh, in one hand and a bar stool in the other and he props himself down on it and he just flicks his hair back and his fringe kind of half laps and he looks like an angsty teenage boy and he just picks up the guitar and he just or the, the lute and he plucks the strings first and you see him kind of seem to he seems to be kind of half tuning it I'm the bringer of the dark noise. The muse of the abyss. But you can call me Nathaniel Obsidian McKnight. And he just starts to strum on the, the lute and hum and half chant a very mopish song. And Kyle, you've returned to the, the party. Uh, with a tray of drinks, or shots for everybody. All right, how's everyone doing? What's next? What have we got lined up? I know you have something up your sleeve, Giselle. Well, Mariella didn't get a go, so... That's true, and I think I deserve this, and the shot that our friend Kai left behind, Mariella's going to take before she does her truths. I'm just going to... Will I roll my con before? Or... Yes, please do, yeah. yeah. Cool. That is an 18. I mean, you, you have a little buzz on, but you're not yeah. intoxicated. Yeah, fine. Yeah. So my truths and a lie is, one, I've once streaked on stage. One of my co-stars was killed in a performance via autoerotic asphyxiation. And uh, I've never been to acting school. Well? Now, look, I... I... I know it's a bit of a flex for people that are uh, successful in acting to go. I've never had any lessons like I'm a natural or whatever. So I think that's a goer. But uh, cheers if I don't think if it's it's B. Um, can, can I get a bit more description on the erotic asphyxiation to see if I understand the circumstance and if it's actually true? Was it a belt and an orange? Um... Where do you put the orange? In, in your mouth. Ah. It was a similar type of situation. We were doing an experimental sort of performance and the director decided that he would like us to play with the boundaries of our bodies on stage and one thing led to another and... I'm, I'm now picturing things and I'm not going to be talking for just a few minutes. <laughs> and just, did nobody kind of intervene? Did you have I mean, no one? If you've been to these performances, darling, things happen. I mean, it was tragic, but it's it wasn't outside of the realm of possibility. I, guess. I mean, I, I suppose he went out doing what he loves. Um, it's kind of a thing. What we all I guess. said at the funeral, yeah. I'm going to go with the acting classes. Giselle just kind of like looks at Destiny. I don't know, um, Mariella, didn't, didn't, like, Destiny's family, didn't, like, her parents that have a, that whole scholarship, the White Rock scholarship, but didn't you get it? 
because of the whole money thing. Oh, I've stopped giving it away. Stop giving it away. Yes, okay, you've got me. The lie was that I never went to acting school. Of course I went to acting school. Look at me. So I got in on a beauty scholarship. My lovely, wonderful Destiny, and she's going to, like, twinkle her, like, hands a little bit. She's like, lovely Destiny's parents. I got in on a modelling scholarship, and it was it was just wonderful, a wonderful time at acting school. Yes, yes. So uh, I guess I have to drink again, don't I? She just wanted an excuse to talk about that, to talk about the modelling scholarship. That's <laughs> all. She wanted everybody to know that she's stunning. Uh, as you're fiddling fingers with Destiny, and she's doing it, but Destiny's like kind of slightly out of sync. Giselle kind of leans across the table. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, go on. She's going to take the job. I got a nine, so it's probably okay no you're you're you've got an intoxicated point of intoxicated so this is your first point of intoxication mm -hmm. a little gift to the gab giselle just leans in to you granny a little bit and kai uh, well she's calling it a beauty scholarship but the white rocks you know, get rid of the white rock family big firm healing potions the boldest that's their gig um well mariella's daddy or grandfather. I can't really remember. How old is she again? They lost all the fortune, so the family felt a bit bad, so they invented the whole scholarship thing for her. And it's basically like a loan that she's just not going to pay back. I mean, but don't tell her that, because that would be rude, and it might upset her and hurt her feelings. No, no, of course not. Of course not. I mean, to be fair, how would she pay it back anyway? I mean, what's she making? When was the last time you saw one of the shows? Oh, God. Oh, no, I've always just told her I'm very busy. But I buy a ticket, I buy a ticket. Because I didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing next? Do we have some libations coming? Do we have... Maria, you, you know my parties, you know, you know... We've got, we've, got a few, we've got a few more games, we've got a few more games. But I think, uh, and Giselle looks over at Destiny. Oh, I think the mood's a bit low. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do one more shot and I think we're gonna move on to the next pub. Okay, this is this pace is getting. I mean, look at that little sad sap on stage. Oh, oh, do I not get to do mine? Oh, oh, oh! It's oh, alright, yeah. like like whatever, whatever you think for the best. I definitely think she needs to get to do hers. Of course, yeah, yeah. And and how about if we get yours wrong, we all do a shot. I think yeah. that's very fair. Let's do that. Three statements. Uh, number one, I have a friend that's a raccoon. And he's called Shanty, and he does what I say, mostly. Uh, number two, I have only spoken to a ghost once. Uh, <laughs> number three, this is my ninth hen night. <laughs> okay. okay. Mm, I'm going to go with, with the third option of being a lie, I think. Well, we have to, we have to grill her. Don't we? You have to ask some questions. It's... I shot fire away. Fire away. What was the ghost's name? Who is he? Who, is, who are they? They were pretty spooky. Uh, very wishy-washy. Didn't get a title or anything, but uh, they had been previous inhabitants of a stately home near where I'm from. The raccoon. When you say a friend, when you say a friend, I love, I love the idea of a little friend raccoon, but like, what, do you hang out? So, we're on similar, we're on similar diurnal shifts, like, like we done similar, similar kind of sleep patterns. And I'd go out, they'd be out in the yard and sure, there's just a kind of an understanding there. And, and they come into the house and that, like. Are you nocturnal? It's happened, it's kind of crept up on me, to be honest. Right. Okay. Like, like I, I had a things I had to do in the evening, and then then the people I had to meet in the evening, I had to meet them in the evening, and so then thing things happen. You know, you have to decompress after whatever you're doing, and and so then it just creeps into the wee small hours, and then I I didn't have much on in the morning, so it kind of happened accidentally. The two of us would be palling around. Like, and and did 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 you like call call the raccoon Shanty, or was that like his own choice? Ah, uh, no, like, he doesn't talk, like, you know, um, there's an understanding, like, you can tell what's going on, like, they're pretty clever. I just thought you might have some, like, magic or something, like, that lets you communicate back and forth, and maybe it was a two-way thing, but it's not, it's not that. No, I've met people, I've met people who can do that, and I'm a bit jealous, but no, no, I've none of that now. My, 
and Destiny's kind of like slur. My Jebby, my little Jeb, he he wrote a song about a shanty called Raccoon, and she kind of bangs her head off the table. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no! Oh, that sounds lovely. I am. He's. I'm. I'm getting married. Yes, you are, dearie. It's going to be lovely. You are, darling. You're getting married. Is, is anybody else worried about her kind of state of mind? I mean, she's getting married in a couple of hours and she kind of doesn't seem to be... I think this is... I think you're supposed to be like that on this night. She's I think right. She's right. Like that, yeah. this, is the, this is the done thing. People can't handle the drink when they drink a lot, you know? <laughs> it's all right. I'm sure she could talk to a priest, you know, get rid of the hangover. I think Ferrari... Ooh, ooh, didn't see a ghost. Can I ask about the ghost theory? Like, how'd you, how'd you first, like, where, where'd you bump into it? I was lying in bed and uh, I wasn't asleep yet and sure, this thing's just wafting around. I think that's a lie. I don't think you've seen one ghost. I think you might have seen many or none. <laughs> Do you really believe she's been to nine hen parties? No. Well, she comes from a small community, and don't they all get married into locking? And there's lots of marriages and weddings and couples and things, and perhaps she was dragged along to family ones, etc. This is a bit of a different head, I think. Here, how wrong do you have to be or me wrong to be and, and that to do shots? We just have to be wrong, darling. Then I'll probably, I'd probably tell you to go for one or two. Is it, it's not the raccoon, is it? I reckon she's lying about the raccoon, and I, I reckon the raccoon can talk. I've heard they can. Is that it, dearie? Is that it? It was a talking raccoon, and you're lying because you said it wasn't talking. Call just now interrogating Rory about strange aspects. <laughs> <laughs> Look, darling, I'm going with number th- number two, the ghost. Mm, Destiny puts her hand up for ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> I really want to go with one, but I'll go with the group with two. If you're waving your hand limply and saying ghosts, you're definitely on a hen night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you hen party realness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, is that the that's the consensus? Is it? We'll all go with ghosts then. I'm afraid everyone's gonna have to do a shot or whatever the rules are. Shot. This is uh, my first hen night. Oh no. Now we have to do a shot. I will drink to that to your first hen night. This talking raccoon, I will. Giselle fills the shot glasses and everybody give me con saves. Oh, oh. Now my luck has got to run out on these at some point because I've 15. Been... 16. Yes. 6. 12. I is going to be absolutely fluked up. I also got 12. Nedris, this is your mm. fifth shot, but you've you've actually only failed. You 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 think you've only failed three out of the the five? No, I've I've only failed one. And this one. And this one, so two. Okay, two. So yeah, you move up into the point of intoxicated. Uh, Granny, what did you get? Sixteen. Sixteen. You're fine. Uh, oh, cool. wait, ten. Huh? Yeah, you're fine. Verer, what did you get? I got. Oh, it was up on my screen. Did you say 12? I think you might have said 12. I did say 12. You did yeah. say 12, yeah. You've another point of in, you've, you've another point of intoxicated? Or a point of intoxicated. So you've got the gift of the gab, I believe, at this point. But you've had your third shot. Granny's had three shots. Ferrer's had three shots. Kyle. Kyle got a six. He's on shot two, but he's... You're shot two. But yeah, it's, it, this does not agree with you, whatever this is. So you're now at four points of intoxicated. You don't move out of... Uh, brazen bravado, but you're you're feeling the effects of it. And Mariella, third shot. Where 15. are we at? Fifteen. Mariella can hold that liquor. Everybody is drunk or tipsy. Destiny kind of like stands up abruptly. She's operating like ten minutes behind everybody else. And hearing the music kind of play on stage, she's like, "Play something by Jeb." Oh, oh my God. Uh, oh no, darling. Oh my God. And Nedris is going to rush forward and just kind of, as if to cradle her slightly from the waist, like literally from the waist. And as she does so, she's going to cast Lesser Restoration on her. Oh, where's the crack in that? 
<laughs> Nedris, Nedris is no is no crack. That's the problem. Ah, uh, the trout of no crack. Mm, yeah, that's me. You need a wet blanket at every party. You do. It's the it's law. It's the law. As as you go to uh, grab her, Giselle also kind of like goes to steady her a little bit. As the kind of the light just kind of like pulses around her a little bit, you kind of see Destiny kind of coming to a little. Like she seems to be coming a little bit more conscious, a little bit more stable. Like she's a little sturdier on her feet. Oh. Oh, I don't. Oh. It doesn't agree with me either. I don't know. It's something about the like, I don't know, maybe it doesn't agree with Celestials or like that whole, uh, you know, it's got the, what, what did you say this was? Abyssal? Oh, um, um, and Giselle kind of looks at you. It's an, uh, an, an abyssal liqueur. It's, it's fine. It's just a thing that uh, Caria picked up. I'll bring Destiny um, to, the, to the bathroom. Uh, good work there, um, Nedris. Good work there on, uh, on that. Aren't you a peach to have at like one of these? That's great. Why don't we, okay, new game. And we'll, we'll kick it off when I get Destiny back from the bathroom. I think we should play a game of dares. So you all think of your dares, and uh, we'll be back. And she's like leading Destiny away. Just before she heads like completely out, can Kyle reach out with his telepathic speech as a bonus action and establish a link with Destiny? He won't say anything yet, but we'll establish a link with Destiny. She has to be close for him to do it. Yeah. Giselle guides Destiny by the elbow and is kind of leading her down the steps. And to be fair, Nedris, you've... Like, you really just pushed all that alcohol out of her. Like, it was just... The the effects, the intoxication is gone. But she still seems wobbly. And as she kind of glides past you, Kyle, you just kind of reach out, kind of give her like a, kind of a, a little reassuring pat on the arm. And immediately the link is formed between you all. The barmaid, Doris, kind of rocks up and starts kind of clearing glasses away. Did I, um... Did I overhear you right there? Is she... Is she one of the White Rocks? I mean, it depends on who's asking. I'm, I'm just asking. I, I, uh, just, just curious is all. Like, she's a bit, she's a bit far away from home, isn't she? She'd be from Galeshire. Is this, is this like a little party on tour or something? Is it? I mean, we we are possibly moving from spot to spot in town. Um, but maybe. I was just curious is all. It's just, do you know. A girl like that from all that money and that high society just slumming it down here in old Ted's Rab. It's a bit interesting now, isn't it? Well, look, you know how these rich girls are. They, you know, want to live a little, throw their hair down a little bit before they get... It's No, it's just lovely to see her rubbing elbows with common folk. That's destiny all over. So it is. She's just, she's good. She's just good like that, you know? She doesn't see money... And she doesn't see, like, class or anything like that. She's just, she's a good girl, you know? Um, you know, I don't know, whatever about the husband or whatever, but, you know, she's doing well. Getting married. I got the veil and all. I thought it was a bit of, a, like, a little, maybe, like, a, a trend amongst young people. You said she was staff here, right? Yeah. Is she staff here? Is she, like, she, <laughs> she, she surely she can go. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Surely she would know that there was a ten party going on. So I guess Mariella's just gonna say, Darling, I I thought you worked here. Do you not know the goings on inside your own work environment? No, uh, that other one, the um the the tall, lanky, pointy one, um dark hair, dark mm -hmm. clothes. Mm -hmm. Raging bitch. Oh, well, no, she, she she paid up front. She didn't say it was a hen party. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're getting married tomorrow, actually. Before we tell more information about our lovely friend, what did she say this party was? She just said it, it was a, a gathering of a group. That's all. She just wanted to reserve a small little space in the bar. She, hmm. didn't, she didn't mention it was a special occasion or anything. But she got the, she got the drink and everything. I assumed you supplied that, no? You know, she got the, the no, abyssal... No, 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 no. I've told... And she kind of looks now direct... Granny, I've told you no outside spirits. Six, seven... No, that's not one of mine! No, no! Just just out of curiosity, because you had mentioned earlier on, and when I tried to do a check on the actual booze, said I had to abuse some of it to get a better idea. 
And I've definitely imbued a lot of it. You've imbued five shots of it. So, like, the, I take it the bottle is still there, is it? Like, Giselle is fucked off. No, it's in, it's, Giselle, it's, it's in her bag. And she has not left it out of her sight. Okay, so if, imbuing the stuff now with my clerical nature, would Nedris have a better idea or will I roll? I'll let you roll with medicine at advantage. Nice. Okay. Ooh. You know, I was wondering because you have that mopey little man on downstairs, and I thought maybe you'd play something a bit more upbeat for this, but like whatever. Oh no, I'm 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 just doing a favor for Marilla. That's her. That's her. Uh, uh, her offspring there. Marilla. Yes. That was that's the, the the main barkeep's name, correct? Right. Well, no, she runs a dive bar in uh, another part of the city. Bit of a um, bit of a shithole, to be honest with you. I really wouldn't be going. <laughs> if you're on a bit of a tour, I wouldn't be going there now. Don't tell her I fucking said that either. She'll kill me. She'll have me kneecaps. What's your own name, darling? Oh, Doris. Doris, lovely. Um, Declan, how long have you? would you say we've been talking to her for? I, I'd say kind of maybe about like the bones of maybe four minutes, five minutes. Because like, she's been cleaning up glasses and stuff like that. Well, darling, I must excuse myself. I must go to the powder room. And I'm going to excuse myself. And as soon as I'm out of sight, I would like to activate my hat of disguise and take on her demeanor, take on her appearance. And I would like to head to the bathroom, please. Okay. What did you get on your medicine check? 30, 20. It's that you start with a kind of a, a smacking of the lips and then like a, a clicking of your tongue. Doesn't it all? And even, <laughs> it always does. <laughs> you even kind of like scrape your, the, 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 the tongue against your teeth just to kind of get like any of the residue and sampling it and kind of sucking on your cheeks. And it, it, it's definitely alcoholic, but there's something else there as it as you renumerate on it as you try and conjure up what that what it is it's that thing that's at the tip of your bloody tongue and Marielle as you shift down the hallway towards the bathroom and you just kind of give the hat a little bit of a little bit of a turn tweak yeah just gotta fix that it kind of fades away and you take on the form of Doris the barkeep and as you push the door open you hear a fluttering of wings and Kyle, you hear a in your mind and a smashing of glass as you swing the door open Mariella and Nedris the potion the drink has been laced with a polymorph potion and there is a cluster of brown feathers all over the bathroom and there's no sign of destiny or Giselle. There's a broken window, a clump of brown feathers. I'd like to go to the window and take a look out and see if I can see anything beyond, like obviously go straight and just have a look out and see if I can see any feather trails or anything crazy on the street. Sure, give me a, give me a perception check. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Uh, that's, well, do you know what, regardless, I rolled a two, so it's two plus, I think it's plus five. Uh, so that's not good. You overly dramatically thrust your head out the, the shattered window, only to be kind of confronted by boxes and bins. You don't see anything. You, 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 can, you can't hear anything. There is no sign of the bride-to-be or her matron of honour. I think I'll take a little bit of time to look around the stall, just see if there's anything left behind. And then after that, I will head back to the table and impart the news. As you kind of step back in, and it's kind of a drizzly night out there. Like, it's not, I mean, it's not bucketing down out of the heavens or anything, but mm -hmm. there is sort of a fairly... Look, it's just it's just the word we use in Romance and Dungeon. There's a dank mist uh, out there. There's just a very dank mist out there. You kind of, you pop back in, and when you do, by the little sink, you spy a black leather shoulder bag the same shoulder bag that Giselle had been sporting all evening mm, yeah I'm going to take a look at it see if there's anything left in it there's everything one might imagine safety pins thread a little compact mirror a little makeup bag next to that and right beside that of course there is a very cold Bindly bottle, practically empty. This is the bottle of the liquor. 
right? Yes, you were, this is the one that Giselle had been pouring from. So all the while, because nobody's really around, mm-hmm. um, Mariella has just been cursing under her breath. So you can just, it's just her flailing around this bathroom like, fucking bitch, bastard, fuck. She's just like searching through the stuff. She's going to take the bag back to the group and drop the disguise in the meantime, because there's no point. Mariella, as you're rifling through the leather bag, kind of sorting it all out and heading your, making your way back up towards the bar. And all at that same moment, in that really telenovela dramatic style, Mariella discovered the smashed window and the tuft of feathers. Kyle heard the shocking chicken cry for help. And Nedris drastically discovered that the liqueur had been mixed with what smelled a little bit like a polymorph portion. The four of you have kind of gathered. The The barmaid has kind of like looked at the group and Caria, Philp and Stephanie, the other hens at the party, they're, they're still sitting up at the booth, kind of staring down at the, the four of you a little oddly. Without Giselle to boss them around, they're not really sure what to be doing. Oh, the, um, the bride's a chicken. She got scared she did a legger. She doesn't want to get married, Dan. Is that what you're trying to say? Either that, or she's uncannily accurate in her impression of a chicken. But I... it, No one's going to freak out if I explain this. I'm, va- I'm vaguely psychic. Yeah, well, I've, I've heard of a few, all right. Uh... I had a friend that was psychic as well, but it turned out, no, he was a bit crazy and it was voices, dearie, voices. I, it, would, it would twack that if she's definitely um, been turned into a chicken. Um, it would also track if we start to sprout a few feathers as well. Because this stuff that we've all been knocking back is um, laced with polymorph potion. Does anyone else feel the need to lay an egg um, or something? No, I went earlier. <laughs> I'm fine. I, how, how long do these things take to work? Does it matter what size you are? The DM, would I know that? <laughs> I'm just, I just, you know, I'd be like a roll. Yeah, you, you give me a medicine check. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, that would be an 11. Polymorph potion doesn't really take into account the, the mass of the individual in that sense of, you know, it takes X amount of liters to knock out a, you know, a, a whatever. You do know that the amount you sip, usually you have to finish the, the polymorph potion for it to take a full effect. So the dosage is quite important. As the, uh, as the group are kind of like pondering their fate, Mariella, you kind of arrive back, black bag in tow. Stephanie, Caria and Philp couldn't help but overhear the, the bride's done a runner and possibly is a chicken and they also might be possibly poisoned. And Caria steps forward. So, <laughs> couldn't help but over here. I gave Giselle the abyssal liqueur. So I'm just going to put my hands up now and admit that. But I didn't add a polymorph potion to it. Insight check. Uh, I would like to help if I can. I w- yeah. Yeah, I was going to try to say, I was going to... Granny and Vareri, you yeah, so you'd be able to roll with advantage, Nedris, but Granny and Vareri, how are you helping with the inside check? What are you doing to support Nedris as she gauges the truth? Well, I was going to investigate the same thing, and I'm happy enough to to let Nedris do it. Okay. And Granny? Granny has, um, you know, led a long and interesting life and um, has dealt with people that tend to hide the truth or you know, like not say what they really mean. And she also does, she plays, you know, uh, poker every second Tuesday. So, um, you know, she she's looking for tells. She's looking for, you know, like maybe a twitch, maybe like she's fiddling with her fingers or something, you know. And also she could be doing, also making sure that no one's going to cast a spell or anything, you know. So Granny's given the stink eye uh, in that way that elderly women tend to give the stink eye. Ferreira is also kind of just staring at Caria, um, just kind of giving her kind of the, the an up and down. Nedris, what did you get with your role? I got an 18. She's not lying. I believe this one. I think she might be telling us the truth. So that really only leaves that stick-up-her-ass bitch of a maid of honor. 
I don't know. Could it be someone here on the bar? Like I was told. Now I don't. I don't be out very often. But I was told people to be putting things in your drinks when you're out. But that one, that one had had the bottle in her bag the whole night. She was very protective of it. And when I tried to check it, she was like, "Whoop!" Oh, and she put it in her bag and she went to the toilet. And I'm very suspect. And she was a bit of a bitch. So as everyone's talking about how much of a bitch uh, Giselle is, Mariella's just gonna like <laughs> burst in and make her wee little entrance entrance with the bag clutched out as if it's kind of disgusting because it's not something she'd buy for herself. She just like barges in like, I can't believe that fucking bitch would do this again. She's always trying to ruin the nights that I have. I can't believe her. My sweet 16, she came. I got lovely pair of white gold hoops from my parents and she said that they were her thing and that I couldn't wear them. I've had it up to here with her and she's going to look right at the friends. If Giselle was to go somewhere, where the fuck would she go? And tell me now, quick. Philp and Stephanie are looking at each other a little bit. They're just kind of staring at each other, kind of completely and totally dumbfounded. <sighs> Let me put this a little simpler, darlings. You thought Giselle was bad company to have around? You haven't seen me on a bad day. Now tell me where she'd go now. Or well, things get worse. Stephanie's head just turns, and as she opens her mouth, all yours. <laughs> And her neck gets larger, and a plume of feathers just ruffles down her neck. Oh no! Philip, uh, sorry, Philip uh, scrambles up onto the table and like literally goes to like run. And as he jumps, a his whole body just polymorphs into a white hen. <coughs> And he flaps into the air and he's like, his little claws are scratching at the air. He does that Legend of Zelda when you throw a cuckoo. He literally <laughs> just flits in the same direction. He doesn't turn, he doesn't do anything. He just, he doesn't, he doesn't slam into the wall, but he hits kind of a wall and then lands down. And he's now kind of just like scratching at the ground. Karia looks at the, at, at the rest of you. Zell, total bitch. Stick up our ass the, the whole thing. Okay, but um, we're all like, uh, it, uh, her, oh, 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 Destiny's mum and dad, their their business, the whole farmers thing. They have a warehouse. They have a warehouse here in Tezrab, and that's she, 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 she could probably she there. She's probably gonna go there as she's kind of half flailing. Her arms flit and their wings, their small stubby little chicken wings. And then she's like, oh god, oh, it's happening again. And like her whole head just kind of turns. She just explodes in a puff of black and brown feathers. And there's now a very frantic chicken kind of running in a circle on the ground. I'm sorry, darling, that you had to see that side of me. Giselle has a history of ruining people's nights. And I'm just fuming that she'd do this to Destiny. Has she done the polymorph thing and drink before then? Has she? Well, I don't know. We haven't really seen each other since we were like 17. But I it wouldn't I wouldn't put it past her. Oh, I've never, to be honest, I've drank a lot of, a lot of alcohol in my days. Some I've forgotten, some I still remember. But this abyssal stuff, does this normally do that kind of thing? I mean, not to cut across, should we not, should we not be in like hot pursuit or something? Or do we just like leave a go? I think it's only fair if we're at her party and she's not at it that we should try and get her. Is anyone feeling kind of chickeny? And also, on uh, does anyone have any tracking skills or for getting after her? Really good. My eyesight's a bit wonky. I I, I did once lay an egg because one of us being a wild mage, you know, it, it's a risk with the territory, dearie. Uh, but uh, it only happened once. So does that help? No. Um, maybe we should look for her. Probably. They talked about a, a warehouse or something. Yes. Um, DM, would Mariella have any information on the whereabouts of Destiny's parents, like businesses in the area? Give me a history check just to see what you would kind of remember. Oh, hold on. Do I have intelligence? I don't think I have any intelligence <laughs> on this character. She's stupid. She's like, <laughs> she's cool, but she's stupid. Uh, it's only like a six. Yeah. You vaguely remember Giselle maybe like like in a in a letter or like she sends out these newsletters she's really arrogant about the whole thing she was promoted as vice president 
of the eastern branch of the White Rock Pharmaceuticals. They opened a they did open a warehouse and branch here in Tezrab, but you're not you didn't really read the letter that much. Uh, it, you glean that because she made sure that those letters were in bold. Having the name is like enough for Mariella. If you guys want to take a look outside and see if you can find any toings and goings from any feathered friends, perhaps there's some trails of feathers or something. I'm going to talk to the bar people. Just two seconds. Is there anything anybody else wants to do at this point? Ned N- N- just is going to start making her way out to this. But well, if they, if they ask us to go look outside, we may as well go and uh, I'll go check it out and stuff. I I have some abilities, but not really a tracker. And kind of mumbling to herself more so than anything else, Ned just kind of makes her way towards the door and wondering what direction to go in. Granny will follow through and complaining about that because she stands. Go to. I'm. I'm worried for uh, Nedris's one night out that it went so hilariously awry that I'm going to stick with her, and also want to keep an eye on Granny because she's crack. <laughs> Is Marilla still present? No, Marilla. She had. It's uh, Kyle. Actually, as you as you are kind of looking around, the, the bar is very empty, with the exception of three hens. You lot, who are kind of half shuffling out, Doris, the barmaid, who's kind of now kind of cleaning up the counter and wiping down the uh, the glasses and stuff like that, and a bouncer who's tufted in chairs onto tables. The even the kid that was on stage a little while ago strumming out those depressing tunes has slipped away, uh, and it is it does seem to be kind of late into the night. In that case, he will um he will leave some gold scattered on the table. He doesn't count. He just pulls out a handful of coin and makes his way out to the others, kind of catches, catches up to the three of them and, and kind of conspiratorially as they're, as they're leaving just says, hey, I think now might be the time for some radical honesty. While absolutely Giselle is a, a total bitch, I'm only aware of that because of the last little while there. I'm not actually, um, I don't know the party all that well. I was hired, I was sent in by Destiny's parents. They're a little bit concerned as to whether the groom is on the up and up. And I was to kind of scope things out and see, see, just make sure it's okay. You know, Destiny comes from money. There is a sneaking suspicion that mayhaps this is not an entirely above board nuptial. So I was to, to kind of gather some intel on that. Now, this admittedly unexpected, but just maybe keep that in mind as we go. If necessary, I I would like to extricate Destiny from situation if possible. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. Just one more question. Is this something the groom would do? Like the chicken thing? Don't know much about him. And the thing is, you can't really take too much for granted from parents anyway, you know? So I'd kind of hope to get a little bit more out of her. But she got pretty... um. She got pretty shit faced pretty quick there, so I I know I don't know if any of you know anything more of him would like to share. Does the parents have any enemies that might might have done this, maybe? I mean they are rich. It is it is a foul situation. Oh, oh, okay. I'll just let that sit there and yeah. Can uh, can everybody who's around uh, take a one d four psychic damage? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I felt um, it. Audience, I felt please it. roll a d four, and you take that psychic damage as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's what I bring to these games. <laughs> what I bring. I don't know if it if it means much. Um, as Kyle was, it, was um, I, I used to uh, look after Destiny where she was like just yay big and she like for now she's pretty small but she kind of gestures to just above her, her one of her boots um and uh, I, I, I've, I've, uh, the, 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 the family the, the mother and father seem to be very very um lovely people when I used to work for them and have kept an eye on Destiny over the years not not in a stalking way no no money dr- money brings enemies unfortunately doesn't it when I, when I was famous, I had a lot of people trying to knock me down, but I was already very short, so they failed, they failed. But, um, yeah, but I, I, I think, is, is, isn't there a rule, a contract, that when you're on a hen night, you have to protect? So, so we're, we're obligated to make sure that Destiny gets home, 
in 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 one piece even if she is a clown you know i mean sorry i think that same rule applies as babysitting gigs there granny (laughs) (laughs) i mean destiny did get home safe from that lich attack so (laughs) yes destiny (laughs) 2 destiny 2 i love that game uh, Nedris is going to be like kind of looking at the ground around like kind of like because uh, Mariella didn't really tell us like about the alleyway or like that so but we guess that they went out the window I'm sure but uh, Nedris is going to be just looking around seeing if she can see anything on the ground or looking at the area so yeah if you want to give me an investigation check uh, so while, while, while those of you are outside kind of giving a look around uh, and Granny reminisces Mariella back inside Doris is hitched up on the bar and like that she is she's just cleaning mugs and, and wiping things down well love you you can't stay here so no darling I'm not home oh well you're lovely um no darling <laughs> um I'm looking for something um and Mariella just oh, moves like no 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 that's that's two taverns down no 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 the fish is gullet no no sorry no I'm I'm looking for a specific place. I'm not a local. I would just like to know maybe a wee direction. The White Rocks have a set of warehouses in Tesrap. And I was just wondering if you know maybe where the pharmaceutical ones would be. Um I have a friend, I'm supposed to meet them by that, and I just I don't know the place very well, oh. darling. And she moves like a, a little coin purse of like about five or six gold on the table and slides it. She's like, I just don't know my way around. Dis- Discretion. You can always count on Doris for discretion. And I, I could tell that by looking at you. You're just so discreet. Love it. So you and your friend are looking for an empty building for a pharmaceuticals. Well, not for nothing, but me and my friend, and she kind of eyebrows over at the, the bald, tatted Goliath bouncer, We've been known to take sojourns down by the dock, and she kind of gestures out the the north entranceway, and we just keep walking down that road, and uh, you're just you're basically just listening, you're just listening to the water, you're listening out for the water, because the warehouses are right beside the dock, and if you're looking, I just steer clear of the dwarf's beard. It puts hair on everything. Right. Um, thank you very much, darling. And she pushes the coins for like just towards her and like as if to say like like very like covertly, just like pushes the the the, the bag closer to Doris. She's like, thank you. have a lovely night. She duffs it down the the, the, the top of her blouse. Uh, Nedris, how'd she get your investigation? I got uh, a ten. Immediately when you you kind of step outside, like I said, it is the it's still coming down that that drizzle. You're not really sure what to look for, and you make your way kind of towards the back of the yellow cauldron. You're you're already on a side street, and as you kind of maneuver back, there is a little alleyway, and you do see kind of stacks of boxes uh, and and crates and stuff like that. As you head down, immediately the door of the yellow cauldron swings open, and three chickens are just thrown out onto the street <laughs> and you just from inside no pets uh, as Ricky chucks the uh, the chickens out at all of you and slams the door there's just a snag of a feather a little further down the alleyway you can kind of see it kind of caught on the edge of a crate I, I think she might have gone this way to the feather here and I'm looking, looking around to see if there's any or debris or feathers or whatever fluff it's, and is it, is it, does that, like, obviously, Marielle hasn't come to tell us that we have to go towards the docks, but is this kind of in the direction of the docks? As you're kind of looking down it, you're not really sure kind of in what direction. I mean, well, you, you're, you're facing east as you look down the alleyway. And does the alleyway go anywhere or is it a dead end? It, no, it, it cuts out onto another. You can see that the other side, there is a side street. Cool. Um, I'm going to just gesture back to anyone that's watching and say, come on, it's, I think it's looking like they came out the window and they went down this way. Oh, no, that sounds good. Um, just on the other on the other chickens, not to be. Should we should we bring them? I have a, I have an apron here. I'll, I'll, I'll put them in it. I know how to tie it, not to hurt them and that. I, I scoop them up if I can. And 
in a in a bindle style thing. Obviously, I wasn't wearing an apron to the do, but it is <laughs> under. It is kind of underneath. Give me an animal handling check for a rage. The animal handling. There we go. I get to roll. <laughs> Oh, it's an at one. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> you immediately got to scoop down, Vera. You literally just got to, with the apron, you're like trying to throw it over the bundle of chickens. All three go off in separate directions. Like they literally kind of, they flap straight up. And there's a chicken perched atop the sign for the yellow cauldron, just giving you daggers from on high. There's a chicken that's gone in through the window of a building across from you. And just down the road, you all just see a chicken running right past Nedris. That's that's giving me both me trying to catch bugs in Skyward Sword and me trying to get the cuckoos in um, Breath of the Wild. So thanks for that. <laughs> I feel like that's what Mariella comes out to. Yeah. Visuals wise, it's just and all these chickens flying everywhere. I guess we should try and get these before the, um, they mix with other hens and then we can't tell them apart, you know? I mean, does this potion last forever? Oh, I don't know. I've heard that. It, it la- might only last for a few hours. It's pretty high level magic in the first place. Uh, if, you wanted th- if you wanted it to stick, you would be talking well beyond most of our capability. Well, I can't speak for all of you. You could be, you could be deeply magical. A couple of reviews have described me as enchanting, but I don't know about magical. <laughs> well, wouldn't the alcohol dilute it, though? It, it's it's kind of hard to tell because it's mixed with this abyssal liquid, so the abyssal liquid might enhance its abilities and the abyssal liquid may make it more diluted, but it's definitely fucking doing something. Come on! And like, Nedris goes starts running after the, the chicken that ran past her. <laughs> Nedris, as you turn to chase the, the chicken... You're not you're not quite sure if it's that thing of you know you're not you're you're all not sure if it's that little touch of hypochondria or not. But as you mull over the shots that you've been doing all evening, your stomach starts to rumble a little bit. I've been I kept tally of the shots that you all did. Yes. Mm-hmm. The number the number of shots you all did. Based on that, some of you are gonna be rolling with disadvantage. Some of you are going to be rolling with disadvantage and a higher DC because of your blood, alcohol, abyssal liquid levels. Mariella, Verere, and Granny, the three of you imbibed three shots uh, mm-hmm. of the abyssal liquid. You are going to be giving me a constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Kyle, right you only imbibed two, you dry shite. So you are making a regular <laughs> constitution saving throw. And Nedris, you did five. That's a constitution saving throw at disadvantage and a higher DC. And I was meant to be the dry shite. Oh, bollocks. My modifier is zero. So yay. The good dice rolled a nat 20. The bad dice rolled a nine. So that's 11. I'm in the exact same situation as you. I rolled rolled an 18 and an eight. (laughs) I am going to send this photograph to you now. I rolled double nat 20. No way. Oh... Well, it looks like you're on your own, pal, because Kyle rolled a four on his non-disadvantaged dice. Wow. Yeah, so I got... Mariella's got an eight. So, Mariella, I'm sad to tell you, you have failed. Gorani? (gasps) I got an 11. 11. You have also failed. Kyle, no surprisingly, a four has failed. Oh, yeah. 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 A nine... Has also failed, I'm afraid. You were all... The, so the four of you were aiming for a 13. Uh, oh. And for every shot above three, you were going to... I added one to the DC, Wayne. So you were only looking for a 15 to survive or to pass. Survive. Um, survive. Survive. Sorry, yeah, survive. You all... <laughs> You're all dead. <laughs> this anyway. adventure concludes. Uh, good night. Good day. <laughs> Goodbye. Ned, Ned just opens a chicken farm outside of town. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, she's loaded. At the start of this, Stackton was like, don't worry, I've got it pretty tight. I know it's going to be pretty quick. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Because you're all chickens. <laughs> you chase after this black and brown feathered chicken. And as you lunge forward, both hands scoop the hen up. And with that sort of like, ha ha, I did it. 
triumphantly, you turn around chicken over your head to find four more hens standing where you left Verere, Kael, Granny, and Mariella. Wait, wait. I get it. Hen night. I get it. I get it. I got it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, and night. You've been listening to The Hen Night with Wayne, Kim and Darren from the Irish podcast, Dahi from Arcavios Eternal and James from, this, well, from here. Uh, the finale is out in one week's time and will there be a wedding at the end of all this? There's only one way to find out and we'll talk to you then. There's just kind of a. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like your vagina. Yeah, not mine actually, because mine. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but.